Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Photography Podcast. My name is Drew Zink and this week I'm going to be going over uh, a part of the video that I went, uh, I did two weeks ago. And when I put that video up two weeks ago, I realized that I had uh, basically glanced over a number of topics that some of you may have questions about. So I'm going to basically break the uh, video I did down two weeks ago into a number of videos to hopefully answer questions that you may have. And in this first video, I'm going to talk about the promote control. And the reason I'm going to talk about the promote control is because uh, it's kind of the basis of how I shoot my real estate images. Um, I have shot with both Nikon and Canon, uh, a 60D, uh, th um, D300, a D700, and any of those cameras, I have used a promote control with them. And the promote control is basically a remote control that plugs into your camera, whether it be uh, Nikon or Canon, and lets it takes control of the way the camera brackets exposures. And it's very important to do this because there are a lot of limitations to both systems that the promote control can overcome when uh, when it's plugged into the camera. So like I said, you just take the, uh, the promote control and via USB, plug it either into your Canon or your Nikon camera. Once it's plugged in, you know, you see your, uh, your meter here on, you know, on the LCD on the camera to set exposure. Now you need to set your exposure into manual exposure so that the promote control can take control of the camera the way it needs to. So a lot of the shortcomings for, uh, for the camera systems like Nikon and Canon you have some Canon cameras that will only take uh, three exposures, two stops apart. Or, you know, some of the newer ones, I think, will do uh, three exposures, like the 60D that I have, will do three exposures, three stops apart. So you're, but either way, you're limited to uh, a three-shot bracket, which is limiting. And then when you get to the Nikon, you're not quite as limited uh, because you can take up to nine shots per per set of bracket images, but you are limited to only one stop in between each uh, each image. So <clears throat> the promote control kind of um, usurps the camera settings and uh, lets you do what you need to do to be able to get the brackets that that you need. So the promote control for me anyways, the way I shoot is I like the nine shots that the Nikon provides, but I don't necessarily need one stop in between every shot. So I like to go two stops between every shot. And so that was both a shortcoming with the Nikon and the Canon because the Nikon could cover that, that range for me, but I had to take nine shots as opposed to five with the promote control or the Canon. I could get the two stops in between each shot but it would only stop me at three shots. It wouldn't let me have the uh, minus four or the plus four without having to touch the camera and ch move things around. So this is why I really like the promote control <clears throat> is because it allows me to take control of the camera and get the bracketed shots I need for each uh, situation. And for me, I like the five bracketed shots with two stops in between. I find that it is the perfect range for me to cover, but I don't need these in between shots. There's no information lost. I, ha I've, I have never run into a situation where I felt like, oh man, if I only had a, uh, an, uh, four additional shots to fill these in, uh, my images would be that much better. Just a personal thing. Now, the other thing you can do with the promote control, which I find very nice, is that say you have a room that has just a monster dynamic range. It's way outside of even the nine shots that, or the nine stops that you see here. Well, you can go 
well outside of that. You can put up to 45 uh, <clears throat> shots together in a sequence and bracket it up to nine exposures apart. So, or nine stops apart. Now, uh, so, you know, if I need a minus five, I can go out to a minus five. If I need a plus five, I can go out to a plus five. If I need a plus six, I can go even out farther than that. All the way out to, you know, a, a plus, you know, uh, 15 if your camera um, can go that high based on your settings. So <clears throat> it's, uh, you know, it's, it's great because I can cover the dynamic range I need for each individual picture. But for, as I said before, 99% of my shots are, st are just this basic five exposures. Now, the other nice thing is, is that, like I said, it can do up to 45, um, uh, actuations, 45 s images in an, an exposure bracket. So, you, um, if you go down to say like a third of a stop increments or half stop increments, you can get all the way out to the 45 images in an exposure bracket. Now I've never done a 45 image exposure bracket cause I've never needed to or wanted to, but you know, those options are there. So it's very flexible with the way that you can control things, control the camera, do your bracketed exposures. And like I said before, the nice thing is, is that it works on Nikon and it works on Canon. So, you know, if, uh, if your camera goes into the shop and you have to borrow a camera from a buddy to get through a shoot, this system will still work on most likely on your, on your friend's borrowed camera. Um, cause I've run into that situation before, uh, where when I first started out, I did have a camera malfunction. I needed to borrow one. And unfortunately at the time I was only Nikon and I had to borrow a Canon camera, borrowed the Canon camera, still functioned fine. I was able to do my shoots the exact same way that I had done them before. Now <clears throat> let's talk about some of the advantages of using the promote control. For one, you can get a larger dynamic range, which is great uh, because there are sometimes you need more stops than what your camera can provide. And so you can get that dynamic range with the promote control. Number two, faster processing. And what do I mean here? Well, if we go back and look at this page, when I have my Nikon, I like my my nine stop coverage. But in if I only use the camera's built in features, I would have to take nine shots and process nine shots. Well, I don't have to process the nine, but I would have to take the nine shots, which takes time. And I don't want to do that. So with the promote control, I'm able just to take my five shots and save me time on every, every shot in a house. The third thing, and this was the most important thing to me, was way less wear and tear on my equipment. <clears throat> I shoot somewhere in the neighborhood of 450 homes a year. So that is a ton of pictures. And on average, I deliver roughly 20 images per house. So if I was using the built-in feature on my Nikon D700, <clears throat> I would be, without the promote control, I would be, sh let's say hypothetically, I'm shooting 300 homes a year with 20 fi final images per home and nine actuations per final image to get that bracketed shot. That's 50,000 actuations a year. You know, that's a third of the shutter just on homes um, in one year. With the promote control, I can shoot 300 homes, 20, 000, or 20 final images, and five actuations, and only be at 30,000 actuations for a year. So, you know, we're looking at, at a, like a 44% reduction in the number of shots I need. Now, this also is important, and I'll get into this later, but it's also important for me because I, I use fill flash in every shot. So that's 44% less wear and tear 
on my flashes as well as my camera. So in the long run, it's gonna it save this product saves me money because I don't necessarily need to run out and buy a camera every couple of years uh, or every two years because of my shutter going going bad or I don't need to replace my shutter because of it. So these are some of the reasons why I really really like the Promote Control and why I use it, how it's used. You know, if you have any questions about the Promote Control, please feel free to. Uh, to hit me up, email me. Um, you know, I'd be glad to answer any questions you can because there are a number of other features, you know, included with the promote control. But uh, for right now, I'm just covering the this one, the HDR feature, because it is the most applicable to the real estate market in the way I personally shoot all of my final images. So that's it for now, and be on the lookout for more.